Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel. So today we're doing this hexagon shockwave and we're using custom properties to make the hexagons that are the highest, the whitest and the ones that are the lowest, the darkest shade of blue. So it's mapping based on position Z. So again, the higher they are, the brighter they are and you get something that looks like this. So first, let's just make a plane. So maybe make it 1500 by... 1500 with 100 length segments and 100 width segments and hit F4 so you can see the segments. I can hit G to hide the grid and let's right click make it an editable poly and then you need this ribbon up here. If you don't see it, you can just right click and say ribbon so that it shows up and under polygon modeling, you can click on generate topology and now you just need to select an edge, any edge and click on this hive. And this will basically turn the polygons into hexagons and you just need to hit R and scale this a little bit just so that um, they actually are more perfect hexagons. So something like this, that will be our plane. And now we need some kind of an activator object to make the shock wave. So I'll just make a cylinder in the middle of this plane and you can give it maybe five height segments, five cap segments and 50 sides. Put it down here. Go to frame zero, hit auto key and set the radius to one centimeter. Make a key and then go to frame 100 and just raise this all the way up. So basically as far as you want your shockwave to go. So I'll say maybe something like this for me. So you should have something like this happening and you can just right click on the cylinder object properties, make it not renderable, display as box. Now let's just make our tie flow here. Birth objects, pick the plane, display geometry and you can select the plane and just hide selection right now tie flow is seeing this as one big object but we needed to see these individual hexagons so we need to break it up so for that we can use a face fracture operator and just fracture it by polygons and set the faces to just one with zero variation so that each face is just one of these little hexagons then we need to give it thickness so let's just add a shell operator and you can give it an outer amount of 50 and inner amount of zero. And basically, if you look at my example here, I have little gaps between the hexagons because I wanted to see these blue outlines. So for that, you can just enable bevel and set to outer and set the outer percent amount to a higher number. So maybe let's try 10. Maybe that's too big. So let's do like 6%. And in the end, when we apply the mapping, I want the top of it to be this shiny black material and the inside of it will be mapped with the custom properties and be a shade of blue. So I'm actually going to enable this mat ID, enable all three of them and set the inner mat ID to two and leave the outer mat ID to one. So let's just add a surface test in here, set it to surface test volume inside pick our cylinder. So now I'm telling Typhlo that if these hexagons are inside of this cylinder, then the test is true and I want something else to happen. And what I want to happen is I want to give them speed because I need them to go up. So I just connect that to the surface test and set the display to geometry. And for the speed direction, we just need to set it to particle Z. So now as soon as the surface test is true and the hexagon is inside of the cylinder, it will be given speed on the Z axis and will begin raising up and set the variation here to zero. So now the problem we're facing is how do I tell Typhlo that I want these hexagons to return back to their original position after a certain period of time. So you can just add the custom properties operator and put it right above the surface test here. You can scroll down to custom TM and I just want to select TM and name this channel something like original position. So now you've basically saved the position of the particles where they are on frame zero right here. And you're telling Typhlo to remember where the hexagons are so that we can retrieve it and have them return back to where they were. So next we can just add a time test into this event and tell it that maybe after five frames with a zero frame variation, I want this to um, go back to where it was. So I'm just going to use a find target and connect it to the time test. So for the find target, just scroll down 
and set the target location point to custom TM. And for the channel, let's select our original position. So now I'm telling Typhlo that after five frames, I want these hexagons to find their target and the target is their original position where they were. So they go up and then they go right back down. So this is the base for our, for our shockwave. And you're getting these ripples. The way you can stop the ripples from happening is just by adding a slow operator. So I'll just add that here and set it to maybe um, 20%. And this will just smooth them out much quicker. So they just sort of settle in place right away. So I'd say maybe what I don't like is that it's a pretty sharp sort of wave. I'd like to smooth it out. So in the time test, you can just extend how long the time test lasts and get more of the hexagons to stay up in the air longer. So maybe I'll set the value to 15, um, but now they're going way too high. So you can go back into speed and lower the speed magnitude to maybe just three centimeters. And this way you get a much smoother shock wave. If you wanted to make it even smoother, you can add another slow operator into this event right under the time test and it will make it even sort of smoother like this. All right, so looking at it from the side, I think maybe I wanted to raise up a bit higher, so I'll just change the speed magnitude to five centimeters and call it good. So I'm happy with the shock wave, and now we just need to apply all the materials. So open the material editor and create a new multi-sub object material here. Discard old map, set number to two. And ID one material is gonna be just the black top. So we can just do V-Ray materials, diffuse, almost pure black, and reflection, almost pure white. Now the second material can just be a standard V-Ray material as well. And for the diffuse, just click on this and do a gradient ramp. And we want it to go from dark blue to white. So we just double click here and make it a dark blue color to start. The middle can be just like a light blue and this right side should just be pure white. And we're going to play with this in a bit. And you can just select this whole multi sub object material and apply it straight to Typhlow. I'm just going to rename it. So now nothing will really happen because we haven't done the mapping inside of Typhlow yet. So first, don't forget to add a mesh operator under everything in order for you to be able to render this out. And then we need to add another custom properties operator, put it here under slow. And for the custom float, I want to make it a position Z. So position Z is going up. So that's what we want to map this by. So the higher it is, the wider it will be. Again, the lower it is on the Z axis, um, the darker shade of blue it will be. And I'll just name this my custom float. Then we need to add a mapping operator, put it down here. Set the mapping from data to mapping from float and set the channel to my custom float and enable normalize values. So this will basically control how many points um, you get for the color um, generation here. So I set the minimum to one and the maximum to 20. That's just what worked for me, uh, but we might need to adjust these numbers. And before you forget, go up to timing and set the timing to continuous. And we have to do the same thing for the custom property. So custom properties operator timing and set it to continuous because we want it to be continually updated with new colors depending on how high these hexagons are. But still we can't see anything in the viewport and I couldn't really get it to work to show up in the viewport. So what I end up doing is just enable the VRA IPR so you can see what it will look like rendered. And now we're starting to see something. So I also unhid my V-Ray lights. So I just have three V-Ray lights in here that I've pre-prepared, super simple. Next, we need to just copy these custom properties into every single node here. So you can just hold control and then hold shift and drag this up here and then hold shift again and drag it up here. So now everything updated and we are almost at the finish line. So now if I just scrub through my timeline, we have our shockwave already working pretty well. And you can play with the gradient colors. So maybe I will just make another white point in here. And if I move this white point closer, you will see that I'm making more of these hexagons that are closer to the top wider. 
So you can control it like that. And then maybe you can make another blue point in here, make it a bit darker, something like that. So if I just put my camera in place, um, this is basically the thumbnail for the video. Now, one thing that I still wanted to mention is right now it's a very uniform shockwave. If you wanted some of the hexagons to be popping up, you know, with a variation like this, you can just add variation to the time test. So I can set the variation here to maybe three and you can see that some of them will be at different heights. So that's just up to your personal taste. I kind of like it when it's um, uniform, even though in my original example, I had something like this happening. So I hope that you guys found this um, tutorial helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be uploading more. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.